It is beautiful. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. And we are live on Facebook, man. Good to see everybody. New life. Good to see all of you. Good to see Body of Christ. Uh, go ahead and say hello to the people. Start with Chris. How you guys doing out there, man? Just want to, um, I'm excited to hear what Pastor Beth was going to share, man. And I just want to, once again, just um, thank everyone for welcome, welcoming us back to the church, man. And I, I'm I'm honored and I'm I'm excited to see what God is going to do in the house of the Lord. And I'm just ready to, I'm just ready to serve. I'm ready to stand right next to Pastor Bethel and the rest of the men and just get ready and put on my marching boots and it's time to march. I'm ready. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, Nady. Say hello. Hi, everybody. I'm happy tonight to be able to join our joint class with the men as well. That way we get to learn a little bit more and, and be able to have this discipleship um, in a, in a, as married couples and everybody being able to hear the word. So um, if you have never joined our class, we invite you tonight to just tune in either on Facebook or obtain the code by us and we can send it so you can join us on Zoom every Tuesday at seven o'clock. God bless you. Amen. Go ahead, Joe, Jose, Alvarado. Um, man, just pretty much excited, like uh, like Chris said, just excited to come together as uh, uh, in unity, you know, even though we got different backgrounds, uh, different relationships, um, you know, the, the, the old, you know, coming together again, you know, hanging out with you, Pastor Chris, again um and man just just ready to fight this battle uh spiritually and with prayer and uh i mean like i said before i want to be like nehemiah and bring you know bring my 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 cement trout and, and and my sword with me you know and and uh and you know i watched pastor Sewell earlier say that uh you know how the relationship is is you know got the men and the female right in front of each other and they can see past each other and and i think that's that's what we're here for is, is is to have each other's back and and if we see something coming we need to tell each other you know that's uh that was a good word from pastor soul yes sir yes sir go ahead thomas roar thomas i know lalo will be listening in today uh go ahead and say hello uh norma Norma's having some issues with your internet or something. You're fading in, you're fading out, but go ahead and say hello to everybody and then Judy, and then we'll jump right in. Okay, go ahead, Judy. Say hello, Judy. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm uh, w watching in from Bronzeville. Can everybody oh, wow. hear, hear me? Yes, very well. Oh. Saludos para mi barrio. Allá yes. saludos para todos en la South Mose. Yes. Um, so my other women's class uh, canceled for tonight. So I figured yes. I would join in and hear in from. Uh, but um, just uh, asking for prayer. My dad is uh, going to have surgery done soon. We don't yes. know the date, um, but we do know that God is in control. And Absolutely, that will, he is. Will be done. Yes, and uh, before we end the show, I'm um, the show. Before we end the, the teaching today, we'll definitely jump on that prayer, and we already know uh, what he's going through, how painful that is, and and we're believing in, in complete success in that operation. Uh, Sister Vanessa, say hello, and we'll jump right in. Hello, everybody. God bless you all. All right, good job. So, so listen. So we've been teaching here at. Uh, uh, the reason why my wife uh, postponed the, the teaching today, uh, you know, mommy's duties, mommy's duties. And, you know, as, as we get closer, uh, saludos para el brother Javier. God bless you, brother Javier. And, and as we get closer uh, to, the, to the revival, we're getting closer to the October 31st where we're doing that street evangelism. Uh, anytime you steer up the hornet's nest, there, there's always going to be uh, a shift. There's always going to be uh, a response from, from the enemy. So 
just so so just bear through it. You know, my, my wife this morning, she texts me and she goes, baby, I'm just overwhelmed. And uh, my, my only response to my wife was just like barrel through it, you know, barrel through it. And I mean, she, I mean, that that's all I can say. She, she she's a soldier, man. And and all I can do is just go into my prayer closet and get on my face and, and pray. That's 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 all I can do. So uh, that's all we can do. Uh, the, the battle is not ours. The battles are, as a matter of fact, the battle's been won. Uh, we want to say hello to Tony, Tori, Tori and Tony, Tony, Javier, uh, Judy, and everybody else who's on board. So good to see Tori on board. Uh, powerful, powerful woman of God, powerful interceder. Uh, she's been given a gift as well, you know, so, you know, anytime you need a woman to pray for you, man, Sister Tori, Sister Tori. And if you want cakes, of course, this is tour, man. She has an amazing uh, gift as well. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, anytime we get it, we get near, we shift those uh, hornets' nests. Uh, you better expect retaliation from the enemy. I was telling everybody that um, it, 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 when you study warfare, if, if you're in the military, um, even in even in the days of, of David, uh, when when you read it around about David and you're reading about about his son. And, and and anytime that that the son started to take over the kingdom, and he he goes to the to the to the to the city of Hebron, and he starts to basically take control of Israel. Uh, basically, David had to send some spies into Israel uh, just to see what the enemy is doing. So anytime that you're about to be attacked, anytime you enter a territory to attack it, uh, the one that's that's gonna be attacked will always send the enemies. Either the one that's going to be attacked or the one that's going to attack would always send spies. And most of the time, especially when it's the enemy or this is good spiritual warfare or good physical warfare, is that the spies are sent to bring confusion into the army or the or, or the men that are coming to attack because uh, the enemy is very is very keen. And, and he knows that that a body divided, it will not stand. I mean, he knows it's biblical. Uh, so whenever the body of Christ is not united, uh, he knows that there will be weakness. You know, when, when a fist is more powerful than a finger. I mean, you know, unless you're Bruce Lee, right? Bruce Lee will beat you up with a finger, but we're not Bruce Lee. So, uh, so a fist is stronger than one finger. And the enemy knows that. So just barrel through it fast, pray, love each other, be there for each other, do for the least of them as if you're doing it unto the Lord. I promise you, when you do those things, believe in him, believe in his promises. They're yes, they're amen. And, and barrel through it. And, and, and if and if and if we and if we have anything to complain about. We complain it to him, right? Not about him, but we complain it to him. And and he's like he's 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 better than a daddy. He's better than an earthly daddy, right? I mean, he wants to hear his what's on his child's mind. And and whenever he hears what what's in his child's mind, he's he's able to help us. It's it's not that he doesn't know, but he wants to hear it from us. So since we're having a united class today, the men and the women today. I chose to change it a little bit, and I wanted to talk about a goal that we should all have a goal as men and women. You know, uh, here in, in the early month of COVID, I believe if, if somebody would remind me, I don't know if it was April. I think I think uh, I think it was after, uh, was after our, 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 our Palm Sunday service. Or after, uh, do you remember, Vanessa, when we did that shift? I think it was after uh, Resurrection Sunday. And, and I had to do something. I had to do I had to do I had to do something different uh, with the leadership of New Life Church. And 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 I created I created a, a at ministerial staff, uh, um, a ministerial staff that perhaps that perhaps uh, did not meet all the qualifications of an elder, amen? They perhaps didn't meet all the qualifications of an elder, but they were available. And basically the administerial staff 
are my disciples. Amen. In other, in other words, I'm, I'm letting them know, look, follow me as I follow Christ. And of course, Nady, Nady fits in a, in a different little bubble because she's basically the Spanish preacher. Okay. She's a Spanish preacher, man. So, you know, I, I know Nady's always like, pastor, I'm getting a tag. I'm, I'm, but yeah, well, yeah. What do you expect? You're preaching. So, so definitely you're getting the tag. So, you know, a, 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 anytime you shake that hornet's nest, expect retaliation from the enemy. And all I can tell you is barrel through it. I'm praying for you. Uh, Chris was very near to me uh, a few years ago when he used to be with me. I mean, he was basically the go-to guy. He was he was Lalo, basically, to me. He was the sound guy. He was this. You know, Tori was this. I mean, they were the outreach team. I mean, they were doing everything. And, of course, you know, when, when you're that near... The, all the moving parts, guess what? Your, your toes are going to be stepped on. Your, your, you know, there's moving parts that are going to hit you left and right. So when, when you're a part of a very active church, uh, just expect to always be even shoved out of the way a little bit. And, and we have to have thick skin. And, and also, Belinda, I'm sorry, Belinda and Jose, I'm so sorry. Belinda and Jose, we love you so much. And I know that you guys haven't been able to visit us over here at your home church because you live, live a little bit far away. But uh, we're still your your home church. Just know that that we love you and we miss you. And and you're always us and we're always you. OK, uh, so anyway, so so a worthy goal to have for all of us. So like I was saying about that staff that I that I kind of put together was basically a, a, a group of people that were available that maybe didn't qualify for elders. Amen but I can see great things in them. Amen. And, and, and then we also have our ministerial leaders that, uh, that as well, you know, they, they may not qualify for elders, but this would be a worthy goal for them. And that is to have the attitude or the attitude or, or, or the qualifications of an elder. Now I've taught a lesson before, on something very similar to this, which which was kind of sort of letting people know that maybe you don't meet the qualifications or you don't meet the qualities of of a uh, of an elder, but this is this would be something good that we can pursue. So so let's let's try to let's try to pursue the character and the and the qualities of an elder uh, without necessarily having the position, right? Uh, we have elders in our church and a lot of times the elders in our church, they're, they're, they have very active lives that they can't really do all the hands-on of the administration of the body of Christ. Uh, but, but they're there, they live a worthy life, they live a life of an elder, they lay hands on those that are sick, et cetera, et cetera. They can teach, they can preach, and all these other things. So I want to teach you guys tonight that serving as an elder or striving for the character or the qualifications of an elder is a worthy goal. This is a worthy goal. And who is responsible for the development of the elders? Well, the congregation as a whole. Amen. In other words, everybody who steps into the congregation, uh, we are all responsible. Amen. We, 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 we can all achieve because God gives us the calling. God gives us the character. God gives us the, the, the gifts. And, and at some point, the Bible says that we grow in favor with God and then we grow in favor with man. We should be seeking out from among themselves men with this type of potential. So as a pastor, you know, I am always seeking those men. Amen. I'm always seeking those men that have potential. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the history of the church has been, it's not so much the potential but it's the availability. In other words, there's, there's a lot of potential in a lot of us. We're just not available. Amen. Uh, so many times what the church has to rely on, not so much on the potential of the person, 
but we rely on the availability of the person. So the availability of the person needs to be discipled, needs to be, needs to follow me as I follow Christ. You got to allow the trip ups. You got to allow, uh, you, you, you got to allow the things, uh, you, you got to allow to fall. Amen. But the Bible says that the righteous fall is seven, but he gets up eight. And you got to allow them to do this. Amen. I, as a pastor, I have to I have to not be so religious, but at the same time, I have to be I have to be very careful with the doors that open because it could affect the whole congregation. But as a pastor, I'm, we're always seeking even the congregation is always seeking men. Uh, with potential, amen, uh, men, men that have this potential. And that is found in the book of Acts. If you go to the book of Acts, chapter number six, talking about the seven that were chosen and they were chosen to serve. And the Bible says in verse one of Acts chapter six, the Bible says, now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, because when a church starts to multiply, we're going to need those men to step up. We're going to need those women to step up. We're going to need those couples to step up. Those that, that have the character of an elder. Those that don't get offended easily. Those that, that are willing to serve. Those that are willing to put uh, their brother, their sister before them. Those that are willing to serve. Those that are less fortunate. You know, those that are always thinking of the big picture instead of the small picture. And in those days, of course, the number of the disciples was multiplying. And the only way that disciples multiply is if everybody, everybody, everybody that is here, everybody that is that is joining us tonight, everybody that's watching us on Facebook, everybody that goes to church, all of us have been commanded by God not only to preach the gospel, but also to make disciples. You know, th there is somebody that you know that you can tell that brother that you can tell that sister hey you know what look i don't got it all together but i can teach you what i know and you can follow me as i follow christ and i'm telling you once you start making disciples all of a sudden your walk becomes uh more lit it your your steps are more lit it and you hear does that make any sense in other words now you got two more eyes that are looking at you. Now, perhaps maybe in the past, you would get away with with some character flaws here, some character flaws over there. But now you're like, oh, my God, now I got this person following me. Now I really got to get into the word of God. Now I really have to fast. Now I really have to pray because now I don't want to become a stumbling block for this young person because I don't want to be that person that it would be better for me to tie a millstone around my neck and cast myself into the sea, right? Like, I don't want to be that guy. So, so as a multi, as the disciples are multiplying, there arose a complaint. And I'm telling you, in the church, church, <laughs> There's always going to arise complaints. Excuse me. There's always going to be complaints. And all, we and all we can do is rise above it, is, is try to fix it. You know, um, you can fix a leak temporarily. But at the end of the day, that leak should point to us the bigger problem. And whatever that big problem is, is got to get fixed or else we're just putting we're just sticking band-aids to all these things. There's a reason why somebody is complaining and we got to look at the at the situation, whether it's it's a church thing, it's a pastor thing, it's a doctrinal thing, or maybe it's the person who's complaining that just has a spirit of. Uh, a spirit of, uh, of criticism <clears throat> or a spirit of whatever, right? So, but, but we got to look at these things because the Bible says that uh, there arose. In other words, it started from somewhere. So we always, anytime there's a complaint, if there's a complaint against your pastor, there's a complaint against the church, there's a complaint against the doctrine, there's a complaint against the fellowship, there's a complaint uh, on something. You hear the complaints. I mean, you hear them. It's always heard. You always hear that echo. And you have to find out where that complaint is rising up from. 
because there's always somewhere where it starts. Amen. And, and it started to rise up against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Now, the Hellenists, these were a type of people that uh, they knew the language. They knew the language. In other words, it's like the church. They know the language. They know the amens. They, they know John 3.16. They know I'm glory, I'm blessed, highly favored. You know, they know all the phrases, but they're really not living it. Because if they were living it, instead of complaining, we would try to fix the problem. You know, one of the things I always teach is like, if a brother, if a brother offends you, or if a brother or sister sins against you, you know, don't go to the pastor, don't go to the leadership. Go to the brother, go to the sister that's offending you, you know, give him a call. Say, hey, brother, man, you know what you said the other day, man, I was very inconsiderate. You know, like you hurt my feelings. You know, I 99 percent of the time, I promise you, the problem is fixed. I promise you. But I think a lot of times because we, we're, we're living in an age of a uh, 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 little confrontation. None of us like confrontation anymore. No I think we we all come from a from a time in our life where confrontation was not peaceful because our type of confrontation is I'm going to hit you in the mouth. And, and, and now, now it's a different type of confrontation. Now the type of confrontation is, look, I'm going to make you aware of the truth. And, and because of that, these Hellenists, they knew the language, but they were not really walking in belief. And because their widows were neglected, in other words, they were they were putting their eyes on the offense instead of the creator or instead of the savior. And any time that we put our eyes only on the negative and we're only putting our eyes on the offense and we're only putting our eyes on, on the lack of or, or the dirtiness or this or the other, and we're not and we don't keep our eyes on the big picture then complaints are going to arise. And the Bible says that because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution, you know, uh, how could they have handled this? Well, they were Hellenists. Now, if, if you see a lack of in a ministry, for example, vamos a decir, okay, you see a lack of service in the bread of life. And you go to the bread of life and you're like, man, you know, that person wasn't served very well or, You know, man, they made that viejita carry all that box of food. You know, in, in, instead of it's easier to complain, right, than to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I got a couple hours on Thursdays. You know what? I'm going to lend a hand. And, and I think this is where the Hellenists went south. And instead of lending a hand, they started to complain because their widows were neglected. What in the daily distribution of what? Of food. And then the 12 summoned, they summoned the, the multiple of the disciples, the multitude of the disciples. In other words, they, they had a staff meeting, right? Like their staff meetings that we have on, on Mondays. And said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God. In other words, these disciples, they were the one that were teaching the gospel. They were the ones that were building home churches. They were the ones that were praying, that were interceding, that were preaching, that they, they were going to the synagogues and they were preaching to the Jews. Hey, you know what? There's only one savior. There's only one way. He is the truth. He is the life. Amen. And, and, he, and they were saying, look, this is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. In other words, sometimes a church, remember, it's all about balance. You can't be too spiritual and you can't be too only the word. There has to be a balance. Jesus said there will come a day where you will not worship me in this mountain, which was in Samaria, nor in Jerusalem, which was where the temple was at. But the Bible says, but you will worship me. How? In spirit and in truth. That means that means that Jesus is spirit. Jesus is truth. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And, and, and we were going to worship God. How? Through Christ Jesus, through believing, through having faith in him. And, the, and they said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So the church can't be just a social service. And, you know, even when we serve food, it's not just about serving food. 
but we got to look at the other aspect of it. Are, are, are we fulfilling that spiritual gap? Are we praying for people? Are, 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 we, are we being the, the ear where, where they can complain to us and we can find a way to help them? Not just the food is just, I hate to say this, it's just the bait so that we can, so that we can pray for them, so that we can, so that we can find where the complaint is coming from. You know, it, it, are they being battered at home? Uh, it, are, are they lacking a job or, or, or are they worshiping uh, another God? You know, uh, all these things, right, that, that, that we can only know when we pray for them, when God gives us a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. And it is not desirable for us to leave the word of God and just serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out. And this is, and this is where we as the church, we seek out among you seven men now first of all they had to have a good reputation so the elders of the church have to have a good reputation in other words there can't be no shadiness in them you know uh you can say all you want about new life church administrative staff that's fine i'm discipling them the elders of new life church i've discipled them for the past five six years they're already in the eldership position, you know, and, and they've walked that walk. They, they've been at New Life for five, six, seven years. Um, you know, they're, they're the elders of the church. They're, there's no shadiness in there. You, you can trust in them. They're not perfect. Obviously, nobody's perfect. But you can trust in them that they pray. You can trust that they fast. You can, you can trust that they can lay hands on you. Uh, and therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation. Here's number two, full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean que, uh, oh, they're always speaking in tongues. No, no. Full of the Holy Spirit, that means they have power. They have love. They have a sound mind. You can see the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the gentleness, the kindness, the faithfulness, uh, the sound mind, et cetera, et cetera. They're full of the Holy Spirit and have wisdom. In other words, you can go to this type of person and say, you know what, man, I, I, I am in a situation, man. I am in a situation. Remember, remember knowledge. God always gives you specific knowledge on something. And then wisdom is how to take care of that thing that he pointed you out about that knowledge. Let me give an example. When we go pray for somebody here on October 31st, and we're going to go pray for somebody, God will give you a word of knowledge, marriage, addiction, pain, abuse, et cetera, et cetera, sickness. Okay, that's the word of knowledge. And then he'll give you the word of wisdom. That means, okay, now how are we going to heal that disease? How, how are you going to leave this dangerous situation? What can, what can God do so that you can trust in him so that you can get out of this horrible situation. And that gives you wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom always work together. Oh, whom we may appoint over this business, meaning this, this complaint that was brought forth. One of the greatest things, you know, my pastor always taught me, you can stand in that line of 100 people and bring complaints all day long. But man, you want to make a difference? Stand in this line where there's only one or two people that have a solution to the complaints. You know, when you bring solutions to the complaints, you know, what's the greatest thing that you can do when you can do nothing else? Pray. Pray. So when somebody comes up to you on Facebook or on your messenger or, hey, brother, can I pray for you? Hey, man, yes. You know what? Pray for me. I want my name being mentioned in the, in the heavenly places. Glory to God, right? Uh, so if you can't do nothing else, hey, you know what? Pray. Pray about it. But then also God will give you knowledge. He will give you wisdom, you know, to bring a solution to whatever complaint. Maybe there's something administrational that can happen. Maybe there's... Maybe there's, there's uh, somebody who, who knows how to dot the I's and cross the T's. You know, um, maybe that's you. 
And once God allows you to be that person, you know, God will put you in position, especially this is a worthy goal to be serving as an elder. But we will give ourselves, watch this, continually to prayer. These were the disciples. These were the ministers. These are the ones that are preaching. These are the ones that are teaching. They, they, they give themselves continually to prayer. They're continually praying. They're continually serving. They're, the Bible says they're praying and to the ministry of the word. What does that mean? That means they are serving by serving the word, by giving out the word. And the same pleased the multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man of full faith, and the Holy Spirit, and full of the Holy Spirit, Philip, uh, Nicanor, Timon, Farnas, Nicholas, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands over them. Then the word of God spread. So, you know, anytime we have elders in the church, we always anoint them. You know, I, I, I'm getting, we're getting ready to anoint our, our, our administration staff. You know, um, here we, we just got a little dots, uh, uh, dots to put and some T's to cross. And, uh, and we're going to anoint the staff because obviously, you know, you're very crucial to, to, to the operation of the church. But, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very crucial that we become solution givers instead of, instead of uh, being critical and bringing out problems. It, it's good. It's good to be critical and say, hey, Pastor Man, we see a problem right here, whether, whether, whether it's something administrational or maybe something spiritual. My Lord, if God's giving you the gift of discernment, I want to hear it. I need to hear it so that we can pray about it, so that we can attack it, so that we can, so that we can uh, uh, put the heel on it and, and squash it. Uh, they should provide the proper environment for such development to be desired and to take place. We at New Life Church or, or, or at any church, we have to provide, you know, you got to have a pastor, you got to have an eldership, you got to have a, a ministerial team, that provides the proper environment. And what's that environment? An environment of love. That's the environment, man. The environment of love. Uh, people that are willing to teach. People that are willing to learn. That is the proper environment that, that develops a desire to say, man, I want to be an elder. I want to be an elder. Even You don't have to give me the title of an elder. But I just I want to have the character of an elder. I'll give you an example. You know, when I was going through Living Word, you know, my pastor Sergio Nava, you know, hey, I wasn't on his staff. I wasn't an elder, man. I wasn't nothing. But he he was he was he was inputting into me the characters of an elder. And, and, and I got real close to my pastor and just listening to him, serving the congregation and um and then he spoke life into me. He will tell me, man, one day you're going to preach. One day you're going to be a pastor. You know, I was thinking, man, there's no way I'm not going to be a pastor. There's no way I'm going to be preaching. Yeah, all right, whatever. And, uh, and look, I'm telling you, this is why, like, when, when I speak into your life and I tell you, you're going to teach, you're going to preach. Man, you know, there's Jose Alvarado will tell you. Jose Alvarado will tell you. He saw me. He saw me walk into sharing life, man. I was a skinny crackhead when I walked into sharing life, man. Flaquito. Skinny. But God, but God, but God, God can do these things. Amen. Uh, and it was a goal of mine. I was like, man, you know what? And it's uh, somebody, I said, I was talking to somebody today and I said, you know what? Look, because they were saying, man, you know what, Pastor, man, we really want to serve the Lord, etc. Et I say, hey, obedience. You want to cast out some devils in your life? obedience you want to cast out some devils in your marriage obedience to the word of god you want to cast out some devils in your home obedience to the word of god because obedience obedience is the result of who's your master or or to say who's your daddy in other words whose character are you carrying do you have a character of a liar of a deceiver you know, uh, 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 of a murderer, of a talker, of an accuser, 
of a complainer, those are the character of Satan. Or do you have the character of the uh, uh, of the Lord Jesus? You know, he loves, he turns the other cheek, he walks the extra mile. Th those are the characters we want to have. And once people see those characters on you, I, I promise you, people will come up to you and say, hey, brother, can you pray for me? And I'm telling you this, that that's a lot of weight to carry. But God calls you. God chooses you. You know, your, your pastor, hopefully we have the eyes, the spiritual eyes to see that God has chosen you because God's the one that promotes, not man. You know, and, and we're just being obedient to say, hey, man, you know what? Hey, you're next in line, man. You're about to take this ministry to the next level. You know, hey, you're, you're going to be the pastor of the next church. I don't know, whatever it is. You know, that that's that's just being obedient to God's favor because of your obedience. And because we've established an environment to where you're being developed, to where you're increasing your desire for this to take place in your life. Amen. Um, a divisive, a gossipy, a disrespectful group teaches young men to shun away from being an elder, period. If, if you belong to a group where there is division, I'm telling you, you got to squash it. You got to squash it. You know, like last night I had a meeting with my staff and Vanessa's there to tell you. You know, we squashed it immediately. Like there is no room for division, none whatsoever. Not in the staff, in the church, we'll deal with it. But when it comes to elders and when it comes to staff, if you're going to be in this, in, the, in that ministerial team, I'm telling you, you, your feelings and your goals are outside, are outside, the, outside. This is all about one. And, uh, and, and when you belong to a group where there's division and, there, and instead of prayer, there's gossiping, <clears throat> you know, that's why when, when people tell you, hey, man, let me pray for you, man, you better take that. You better say yes to that because those are very unselfish individuals. Those are interce interceders. These are people that are willing to intercede for the body of Christ. Where there, listen, when, where there is prayer, <clears throat> there's no gossip. I'd rather have a church that prays than a church that gossips, man. Division, gossip, where there's disrespect, you know, making little comments here and there. Uh -uh. No, that has to stop. Or else the people that are coming up, they're like, man, you know what? I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be part of that eldership. I don't want to be part of that staff. That's why I even still, our, our, our staff, well, our staff, I don't have to remind them that. But I tell my, I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't need to remind our elders. I, I have to remind my staff, hey, no playing around. There's a time for that. But in general, no playing around. Why? Because people are looking at you. And if you're being divisive, you're backbiting, no, 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 no. If you want to play like that, then go back and sit down in the pews. Go back, sit down in the chairs. And then when you grow, you can come back. But if a congregation has elders, it should respect them and count them worthy of their honor. So, you know, and, and that honor is earned, obviously, because of their lives. Uh, and this encourages the young men, the young women to want to serve in the same capacity someday. So uh, those who are presently serving as elders, they ought to present an example to be admired and imitated by young men. And, and, and we just state young men because obviously I'm talking about men and women, okay? And, and, and they should, number one, they should, sh they should show that they are happy to serve, right? Our elders, when you walk into any church and you see the elders of the church, you don't want to see no bitter person serving God. I mean, the world is bitter enough, okay? You want to come into church, you want to say, man, you know what? After talking to that person, man, I got excited, man. I'm like, I'm ready to serve, amen? You know, when, when you know, this is why when you get up in the morning, go pray. You know, if, if you feel weak, go pray so that when you show up into the world, all they see is Christ in you. The, the world don't need to see us. 
The world needs to see Christ. Um, anyway, so, so, so we have to be an example so that the young man should say, man, you know what, man, that, that person really encouraged me. You know, he told me the truth, you know, pulled my ear, got me back into place. But man, every time they serve, they're happy doing it. Uh, they're not grumbling. They're not complaining. Even though sometimes it's tough, right? For those of you that serve, it's tough. I mean, there, there, there's times I, I, I remember, I remember, and, and, and I'll mention Chris again because I remember Chris, I va monqueando con una pierna, pero, pero ahí va, he's serving. You know, I've seen Nady on Wednesdays, también on Wednesdays. I mean, you know, it's tough. Or, 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 when, or when we serve Thursdays, right? And, and it, it's tough. But you know what? You get the job done. You get the job done. Because being the quality of an elder, you know, when, when they see you go through those tough times, it encourages others to say, hey, you know what? I can do it. I think Vanessa said it today on one of her videos. And she was uh, she was talking to somebody on, I guess, on a video phone on jail. And basically, this person told Vanessa, hey, if you can do it, if God can do it with you, he can do it with me, too. Right. And, and that ought to be our reflection to other people. You know, when people see us, they say, man, he brought you out of what? I say, man, if he can do it for you. He can do it for me, too. So we need to have the young people. When I say young, it could somebody could be 50 years old and they're still considered young in Scripture because they're, they're barely born again. So any young person, any, any spiritual young person that is being taught and that is being trained, I mean, we need to teach them and we need to train them. One thing is to teach from the pulpit. Another thing is to train them to say, follow me as I follow Christ. And, 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 and it takes effort and it takes time, et cetera, et cetera. So let's talk about, let's talk about, let's go to, let's go to Titus chapter one. Anybody have any questions or, or any statements? Just chime in, man. Just interrupt me. Go ahead. Just jump in there. Go ahead. Anybody want to have any comments? Somebody read uh, Titus chapter one, verse number five. These are talking about the qualities of an elder. Somebody just jump in there. For this Somebody, reason, I ahead. left you in that you should set in order the things that are lacking. And appoint elders in every city as I command you, commanded you. I love this verse. This verse was the inspiration of our COVID season. And before COVID season, I sat myself down from the pulpit. I don't know if you all remember. I sat myself down for, for, for seven weeks. And when I say sat myself down, I was obedient to God, Okay. And even though, you know, I love to preach, man, I love to preach, man. And I sat myself for a week and, and, and I hit myself in the closet and, and just my face to the ground and just praying and fasting and right before the fast. And then right when the when when the COVID hit, uh, God showed me this this scripture right here, this verse right here. And he literally said, look, there, there's, there's a reason I've done this. There's a reason I did this. There's a reason I did this for the elders. There's a reason I did this for you, for the church, for, for pastors, for ministers, for the body of Christ. You know, because God does everything for a reason. He, he doesn't just shoot darts and see where it hits. I mean, everything's for a reason. And the Bible says that he left him. He left Titus. Paul left him. And he left them in Crete. Now, Crete in Hebrew, I mean, in, 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 uh, in Greek, it means flesh. And, and there's times where God will allow you to know your flesh, to recognize the weakness, your weakness. Because the Bible says that the flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. And God, for this reason, he, he's allowed us to recognize our weakness. In the time of COVID, he had to show me my weakness. And at that time, before COVID, there was a season where I was lacking 
uh, going into my closet. And I was more concerned in bringing the word of God. I was more concerned about standing behind the pulpit than, than getting myself in the face of, of God and seeking his face. And, and, and he spoke to me personally and said, for this reason, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you see your weakness, which is your flesh. Because that was the weakness. And, and he said, and to me was, if you don't recognize this, and, 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 if you don't, and if you don't have a victory over it, then you're not going to make it through this COVID. Nor will new life make it through this COVID. Because through this season, it's going to need a pastor. It's going to need a leader to be able to lead them through this season. Cool. Prayer, intercession, teaching, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Making, making these choices for them. And for this reason, Paul leaves Titus the same way. He leaves him in Crete so that he was aware of the weakness of the church. That you should set in order. When you recognize what your weakness is, then you're able to set things in order. <clears throat> a lot of us try to set things in order without recognizing our weaknesses. As a matter of fact, a lot of us don't even want to acknowledge our weaknesses. Some of us are weak in our marriage. Some of us are weak in our prayer life. Some of us are weak in our, in our words. Some of us are weak in our knowledge and our wisdom. Some of us are, are weak in, in this. And whatever area you're weak at, you're, you're weak as a husband. You're weak as a mom. You're weak as a wife. You're, you're weak as a leader. You're weak as a man. You're whatever it is. <clears throat> God allows you to see it, to spend time with it. And when you start to spend time with the flesh, it starts to disgust you because the flesh is disgusting. It's dirty. It's the dirtiest thing. It's like a person that doesn't wash for three, for three days. It's stank. It's nasty. You want to get rid of it. And once you recognize this weakness, you can put these things in order. And all of a sudden, you start to put things in order, man. You start to put God first above everything else. When you start to put God above everything else, everything else God will take care of. When you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, the Bible says all these things shall be added. Amen. And a lot of times God has to allow you to see your weakness. And so that you can set the things in order, the things that are what? That are lacking. And for me, I knew what was lacking. For you, there's something that's lacking. Now's the time. Don't wait till you get an uppercut from Satan, knocks you off, and then you wonder what's going on. If God's already showing you your weakness of whatever area in your flesh, you know, attack it. Attack it with prayer. You know, there, there are some Christians that can't stop smoking. There are some Christians that, that can't stop watching this, can't stop watching that. You know what? That is the weakness, and you got to attack it. You got to attack it now so that you can put things in, in order. And then the Bible says, and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. And of course, this is where God is about to promote people into positions that he can trust. You know, the Bible talks about Ezekiel that he was, he was choosing these, wa these watchmen. <clears throat> and through this COVID, you know, we've been seeing those that have been dropping off and those that have been promoted. You know, are, are you the ones that are being promoted? Or are you the ones that are being dropping off? So this is the time. If any other time, this is the time that we can take advantage of this verse. Admit to God and say, Lord, I want the characters of an elder. I don't want the office. I just want the, you know what? The character is better than the office. Because when you have the character, people depend on you. The church depends on you. The pastor depends on you. Your neighborhood depends on you. Your family depends on you. Your husband, your wife, your children, they depend on you. Sometimes offices can be the worst thing that can happen to people. I've seen people, they, they're given offices, they're given positions, and it's like their character just goes down the drain. Why? Because they weren't ready. 
But uh, we'll stop there, guys. We'll stop there, man. That hour went pretty fast. And uh, I just want to go around the board, just kind of see where you guys uh, uh, just kind of chime in, whatever you guys want to share. Go ahead. Hey, Pastor. Jump in. Can you hear me? Yeah. You know, I think uh, as you were saying that last part about when you're placed in an office and, and you end up, you know, falling. I think the problem is that so many people go into a church and they're seeking titles. They're wanting to move up in the church. They're wanting to be placed in elders positions. They're wanting to be pastors, but, you know, they're not ready for that. And, and I truly believe that when you're ready, you know, God will promote you to that position. And we try to promote ourselves and we get ahead of what I get ahead of God. And mm -hmm. he, he has a vision for us, but we have to allow him to work in us and, and put us in that position and not be impatient about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like uh, that verse right there. He, he, he leaves you. There's a reason why you're in a position you're at. And many times, th th like there's times that we can start saying, well, how come they're not recognizing our effort? You know, how come they're not recognizing this? And, you know, it, it, it's in those places where you can say, Lord, you know, I do this for you, you know, because I'm thankful where you got me out of. And, and even in those places, wherever that place is, uh, he can still show you some, some character flaws that we can deal with and and once you deal them once you deal with it then he will promote you he will promote you to that place uh, of an elder and the bible says in every city there was elders in every city as he commanded so he commands this you know he commands this you know when 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 lalo was promoted you know when i don't want to say promoted was but what was given that position it was because, you know, the, the character's there. The character's there. And, and you know, God promotes, not man. I, man just listens to God. That's it. Any Anyone else like to uh, add something? I do want to chime in. Um, Pops, do you remember when I when I first got to the church, I, I kept saying, I want to be staff. I want to be staff. I want to be staff. I was never made staff. Nothing was ever happening because I was, what were my intentions? What was my reasoning? Why did I want to be on staff? And and, and then when I stopped uh, doing it for the wrong reasons and I just started serving, um, God started promoting me. It wasn't man that was promoting me. It was God. So what you're saying is exactly right. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, uh, availability is, is big. And then, and then God equips. I promise you God will equip. Uh, but it will never come without a test. I promise you. It will always come with a test. And, and that's where you're going to find out if you really have the desire to be put in that type of position, because those are type of the position where the enemy, you become a target to the enemy. And a lot of people are like, you know what? I, 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 I don't need that type. I don't, I don't need that type of target in my life. Uh, I have enough on my plate. And if that's the case, then it's not your season. Some of us, it's our season. And for some of us, it's like, I'd rather serve God or die. That's the season I'm in. Either I serve God or I die. Not everybody is in that position. It'll come. It'll come. But, I, but it, it, it'll come with a lot of turmoil, I guarantee you. Anybody? No. I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back to what you were talking about, where we can come to one another and be able to be, you know, to have that maturity, that boldness, and that transparency to be able to to bring something when we don't have either the same agreement. Because at the end of the day, we can all disagree. It all matters what God is telling us, and you know, just to have that transparency, be able to be like we're not agreeing, but it doesn't make us enemies. We don't have to bring division. We don't have to hate each other. It's just that I can come to you as you can come to me. I can correct you with the love of God 
as you can correct me as well, but to be able to have that unity and that agreement between each other, I, I think that goes a long way. And I don't think um, many have it or, 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 you know, or just many just kind of because of past experiences, it's very hard for them to actually come and express themselves without getting into a point where you can offend or others can get offended. So um, always be alerted, always be in the spirit, always asking God to speak for you, to be able to guide you and everything that you're doing so that, you know, that everything that comes, because God is a God of order. He is not a God of confusion. He's a God of assurance. He's a God of um, firmness. So we pick up on his character. So we have to have the love of Christ and, and be able to exhort and correct with compassion as Christ would give us those same opportunities. Um, how I always say it's like, would, how would you think God would be like if we choose and we sit here and we pick, would God be able to do that to us and be like, you know what, today I'm just not even going to have compassion towards you or today I'm not going to um, not even, you know, deal with you today. That's not how God does that. I think for us to have that love and to be able just to guide each other and pray for each other, I think that goes a long way. Yep. Love covers a multitude of sin. That's what the Bible says. And of course, God is love. So, you know, in context is Christ Jesus. He's covered our sin. And Jesus is the blood of the lamb. He is the lamb and he's covered our sin. That's that's the context of it. So anyone else want to uh, jump in there? Go ahead. Just jump in there. Yeah, I'd like to say something, Pastor. Um, I think a lot of it, like, really has to do with just, uh, first of all, the obedience, you know what I'm saying, of um, just listening to the word of God and not wanting, not wanting what you want, but wanting what God wants for you. And, you know, I think a lot of times this is that we need to understand that just like when Jesus said in the, uh, in the book of Matthew, uh, was it Mark, Mark 10, what is it, 40, 45, where he said, even the man did not come to be served, he come to serve. And you know what a lot of times is, is that's what we have to be willing, before we step into any place, we have to be willing to serve, coming to serve. And I know, you know, with me coming back, my, my mission is to serve. And wherever God puts me, where he wants me to be, that's that's on God and God will evidently tell you. But, but as far as like, where, where it all begins, well, I think where it all begins is just the obedience and knowing the voice of God, knowing the voice of God, and just know that before anything, we are there to serve. We are there to serve God, and we are there just to just just be obedient and then just listen. And as and as that that plays out, because God wants to know, God knows who you are, but at the end of the day, it's like, are you going to listen to God? Do you want to jump ahead of God? And it all boils down to how are you moving? Are you moving in the flesh or are you going to be moving in the spirit? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times it is I, I like to hear the voice of God before I even talk, before I even move, before I even go anywhere. And um, like I said, you know, and it's just like with us going back and first of all, anything, I had to be still because a lot of times we get too anxious. We get too anxious and we try to run over God. We try to run before God. And next thing we know, we end up hitting a wall. We end up hitting, you know, hitting something. And God's like, well, first of all, you should have slowed down. Don't, don't try to run ahead of me. Then ask me, where am I at? When, when basically we run ahead of God because we get so anxious. We want to do this. We want to do that. And God is like, all you have to do is be obedient and, and I'll lead the way. And a lot of times it is then like, like I told Tori, I said, man, we're just going and we're letting the Lord lead the way and whatever the Lord has for us on his time, on God's time, we'll take it and we're ready. But until then, man, we're just ready to serve, you know what I'm saying? And just be obedient and listen to the word. So I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm glad that, you know, I mean, I'm here, we're here on God's timing. It was right timing. It was real right timing for us to even come and just to, like I said, we're just here to serve. We're just here to serve, and whatever God gives us, man, all glory to God. So that's all I got to say. <laughs> hey, man. Way to go. Yeah, I mean. I don't know if I'm going to avoid it. Oh, yeah. This one was on my heart. You know what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. Yeah, so. You know, but I, 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 I know you. I, I, I know you. That's, that's who you are. You, Tori, Letty. I mean, you guys always serve, always serve, 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 serve. I mean, you know, um, you, I, I'll say this right here. I'll say this right here because I think this is, I, I'm, I'm going to share a word with you guys real quick. I, I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. You guys forced me to, but, uh, it, it, you go to because because you reminded me about Mark, the book of Mark. And in the book of Mark, chapter 10, it talks about in verse 17, talks about Jesus. He counsels a rich young ruler. Now, this rich young ruler is a picture of the American church. Okay. Mm. And, and this is where we have to like really open our eyes spiritually, guys. Okay. Because this is talking about is talking to us. And in verse 17, now, as he was going out of out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one. And of course, the apostolic doctrine uses this verse as the oneness doctrine. But what he was trying to point out that he was looking at that young man and saying, you can't see that. In other words, you're, you're addressing me as a good teacher or you're addressing me as a human being, but you cannot see because you're blinded. You cannot see that I am the son of God. And he's saying that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud, honor your father, your mother. And he answered to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus looking at him, loved him. Listen to me. This is where I believe as pastors, as ministers, this is what Nady was saying. Anytime we minister to somebody, Jesus looked at him. And then the Bible says he loved him. And then, and then spoke to him. One thing you lack, and this is what the I be, I believe this. I believe that this scripture is definitely talking to the Western Hemisphere uh, theology, Western Hemisphere Church. One thing you lack, go your way. Sell whatever you have. In other words, go your way. Go back to all those places where you took repent sell whatever you have and give it to the poor and then you will have treasure in heaven in other words our mind and our eyes ought to be set on the things that are above on the things that are in heaven on the author and the finisher of our faith i mean it doesn't mean for you to go live in a tent i'm not saying that uh but that but that shouldn't be our master manon shouldn't be our master you know, money, uh, power, that shouldn't be our master. And he said, give this treasure and you will have treasure in heaven, but come and take up your cross and follow me. That is discipleship. And watch this, watch this. But he was sad. He was sad at that word. Why? The American church doesn't want to hear this type of preaching. The American church wants to hear, um, Man, what's that word I'm looking for? G Prosperity. Gummy bear preaching, Pastor. Gummy bear preaching. That's Gummy bear preaching. preaching. There you go. The the prosperity. I mean, that, that doesn't mean God doesn't want you to prosper. He does. And I guarantee you, you can ask anybody who's here, anybody who's on Facebook, when when you give, I mean, when you have a gift of giving, and when you have Jesus Christ in you, you will give. Look at New Life Church. I don't put a lot of emphasis on tithing. I really don't. I really don't. It's not that I'm being disobedient. I'm not. But I would rather preach to you the truth. I'd rather you getting filled with the Holy Spirit. I'd rather have you getting filled with the love of God. And I guarantee you that you will give. Those that love God become givers. And I don't have to twist nobody's arms. I, I've never called somebody on the phone. I've never had the gall 
to call family or call somebody and say, hey, man, you haven't tithed. That will never come from me, man. But if I teach you and if I love you and if you can see the vision of, of the body of Christ, I guarantee you, you will give and you will give abundantly and you will give out of joy and gladness, not, not out of necessity. You know what that means? Whenever you say, well, I have to give my tithe, you know what? You might as well just keep it. You might as well just keep it. You might as well just keep it. It's better to give out of joyness, out of gladness. But, and, when, and when he heard this, the Bible says he was sad at this word. And then the Bible says this. He went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. When the world, when, when the love of money, when the love of power, when the lust of the eyes, when the lust of the flesh, when the lust of the world becomes greater possessions, then picking up your cross and following Christ, you will live, you will live a life that is full of sorrow, like this young man. I'll end with that. And hey, Pastor, anybody else want to go ahead? Oh, go ahead, Jackie. I didn't know how it worked. Okay, so I wanted to say something, and then I told Joe, no. I was like, they're talking about something different. And then no. you went into the Western church and the spirit. And what I wanted to talk about was my best friend had recently yes. had a revival at her church. And she said that um, the evangelist that was there, that he came in. I don't remember the name of the country where this woman came from. Um, so I don't remember the specifics about mm -hmm. that. And I wish I did. But this woman came from another country. And um, but she was saved as far as like Jesus Christ was her Lord and Savior. And they had a church in that country, but they couldn't pray out loud they couldn't worship everything had to be very quiet now they got all of them together in the same room but they couldn't say anything they couldn't vocalize um <clears throat> their belief in jesus christ so they came to the united states and they were so excited because they were like yes we're free we can worship freely they go and they visit a, they're talking about a church and they go and they visit a church and the wife tells the husband I want to go back to my church. And he's like, we haven't found a church yet. And she was like, no, I want to go back to my church in the other country. She said the Western church has a spirit on it, a very dark, dark spirit. And um, Joe and I have visited about five or six churches, probably seven, probably churches within the last like 10 years. Um, and, and it's true. It's true for this past weekend when we came to your church, which I already knew what kind of pastor you were. I knew, I know your background. I know where you came from. So when we came to the church this weekend, the churches now, I don't know how many of you have been, have visited any other churches. The churches aren't like that no more. They're very quiet. They don't, they don't speak in tongues. They don't, they don't use don't the gifts of the spirit. They don't even talk about the gifts of the spirit. They don't, they don't talk about the relationship <laughs> with God, you know, like it's, um, the churches are cliquish. Like they're just, you know, this little group here, this little group here and a uh, very political, they go by political things, you know, where they're putting people into positions for the benefit of financial for the church, but not for the benefit or of um, the spirit, you know, for God tells them they're not praying and, and, and putting these people into these positions. And then a year, a year and a half later, those people are dropping out of that position and leaving the church, like leaving the church completely. So um, there is a spirit. So um, you guys that have been with Pastor uh, Beto and are with Pastor Beto are incredibly blessed because, and I'm not trying to talk him up as some kind of God or anything like that. We know there's only one true God and one Jesus and stuff like that, but he definitely has been a disciple of Christ and his church is following along, you know, what God intended for the churches to be. And what I wish that lady from that other country could have experienced in seeing the Western church and knowing that there are few and far and not to be discouraged about the amount of people that are in the church because those people you're feeding into are then going to be feeding into other people too. And there's not a lot of pastors right now that are feeding into their congregation at all. 
So anyways, that's all I wanted to say. I just thought it was really sad to find out somebody came from another country to a free worshiping country and it wanted to go back to her quiet church that she couldn't vocalize her beliefs. So that was all I had to say. Well, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable words to hear because, you know, we're all one body. Uh, but this is, this, this is the great thing about the gospel that it unites us. And if, if we are going to have any dominance over darkness, it's going to be through unity, through love, and of course, through a sound mind. And uh, it is not by power, it is not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do, guys. And this is why, you know, the, the fivefold ministry of the church has to be in effect. And, um, you know, and, and everybody has uh, their gifts and, and, and go and allow your gifts to manifest themselves, whether you're an evangelist, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a prophet, you know, prophesy, you know, I always say, if you're going to declare any decree, declare the decree that is the word of God, the, the decree are the decrees that the king decreed. And that is the word of God. And that is what you declare um, you know, and be the fivefold ministry out of love and, and, and speak and speak the truth. Uh, and, and you will be set free. The truth will set you free. It's uncomfortable. Uh, either, either you're, either people are going to be saved. Like when Peter preached the truth and then when Stephen preached the same message as when, when go tonight and go to the book of Acts and study the scriptures that, that Peter preached. And that Stephen preached and verbatim, it's the same message because he was telling the Israelites or the Jews that they had crucified the Messiah. It's the same message, guys. But one of them, 3,000 got saved. The other one, he got stoned by 3,000. So, you know, you're, you're going to be stoned. If that is what God calls you to be stoned, hey, take the stoning and say, Lord, forgive them of this sin. Uh, you know, and if you're the one called to lead people to Christ, then say, Lord, thank you, Lord, give you glory and honor. Amen. Anybody else want to want to comment and then close? Go ahead. Hey, Chris, go ahead and close, Chris. Right. Lord Father God, we come here today, Lord, and we just uh, uh, want to thank you for this type of word, my God. And Lord, I just ask that you just continue to be with us, Lord, why you, you set the building the way you want it to be, my God. Lord, we ask that you just continue to be with Pastor Beth and why he leads the way, my God. Lord, we thank you for this word, my God. Lord, I ask that this word penetrates into hearts, but not just in hearts, but into minds, my God. Lord, we come to you, Lord, and we just we, we give it all to you, my God. Yes. And Lord, we just ask that you take full control, my God, because you know what's best for the church. You know what's best for us, my God. So, Lord, we just want right now, we just want to glorify your name, Lord, and let you know that we do it for you and only you, Lord. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and we love you for this opportunity of, of of being discipled and fellowship, my God, because we know you got a, a great purpose, my God. We we know that you there there is a power move that's about to take place in new life, my God. So Lord, with that being said, Lord, we just want to glorify your name, and Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for all what you're about to do, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen, guys. Let's uh let's also pray uh for Sister Judy. Keep her in her prayers. And Brother Lalo for his family in Mexico. And Father, we just pray for these two families. We pray for Judy's dad. We know, Father, that he's going to go under the knife. And we, we, we just, we know that there's going to be a doctor. There's going to be nurses, Father, that are, that are completely under your spirit, filled with your Holy Spirit, with your knowledge and with your wisdom. And Father, that there will be healing in that leg, in that foot, on that leg, in the name of Jesus, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we pray for Brother Lalo's sister, Rosa, in Mexico, and his family. 
uh, here in the States and there in Mexico. Father, you know, you know his desires, you know the prayer re requests, and Father, that everything is in your hands and that there's a reason for everything. And Father, we just stand in obedience and submission to what you're going to do. We thank you. We worship you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. We'll see you. We'll see you, guys. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, in the name of Christ Jesus. God bless you. Love you, guys. Love you.